All right, guys, I'm going to finish up Axe, and I decided that I'm going to finish it on Spreaker because it's just going to be a lot quicker. And it kind of stinks that I did, you know, over halfway through recording videos, and now I'm going to just record the audio, but uh, I should have probably just used Spreaker the whole time, but that's not how it was, so I'm doing this from my phone, and I got a headset on, it might be a little quiet. But I'm at Act 17, and right now I'm going to be using an app for my phone, the KJV app. Very useful, I love it. It's easy to search for things, and uh, <clears throat> it just says KJV Holy Bible, and it's a, there's two different kinds. There's like a gold one, that's like the more upgraded one, I guess. And it has, uh, it just says KJV on it. Anyway, I'll, I'll read through this one and I'll still have ten more to go. Uh, I think there was 28 chapters. Now this doesn't have the sections, um, so I'll just be reading straight through. It doesn't have them categorized in sections like the ESOR does. Which is helpful, but, uh, so Acts chapter 17, verse 1, and I'm just going to read through it. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, <laughs> you know, there's so many places and, and names that I can't pronounce, but it makes Acts a little bit tough to read. They came to Thessalonica. Well, we know that because Thessalonians. Where was the synagogue of the Jews? And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. <clears throat> so, not a few, I would think, would, be, would mean many, which is an interesting way to say it, but... So, Paul and Silas, preaching Christ in the synagogue still... But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. It says they took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. <laughs> that makes me think of like uh, these low-down, dirty guys that were like brutes that... Uh, I don't know. That's what it seems like. They gathered these guys that... These rowdy guys. Violent people. I don't know. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. And that's a really interesting phrase, too, that they turned the world upside down. The apostles preached by preaching the gospel, by converting so many. You know, they turned the world upside down, so to say, figuratively. That, uh... You know, they really turned the world on its head. They cause, you know, no small stir, <laughs> whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city And when they, when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. 
These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So that's a popular verse, heard a lot, that, uh, and, you know, these people um, search the scriptures daily. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul in Berea, or at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus, for to come to him with all speed they departed. Now while Paul, while, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he with the synagogue, in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. When certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? <laughs> Others some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus in the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, what this, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would not know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all these things you are too superstitious. And so this is a popular sermon with Paul at Mars Hill, Acts chapter 17. And all things ye are too superstitious, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation." <laughs> and just when I read that, it makes me think of Brian Denlinger talking about how, uh, you know, segregation and, and people should stick with their different nationalities and whatnot. And I know he's not the only one that believes that, but I remember he would use this verse about the bounds of their habitation. Um. <clears throat> You know, but he did say that they made of one blood all nations of men. And um, basically the bounds of their habitation just means that, uh, you know, God created everything. He created the land and, you know, the, the people and the, and the animals and everything. And uh, so that's all that means, really. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And yeah, I was thinking about the bounds of their habitation again. It doesn't mean like they're bound to a certain area, like like n like necessity or like like they're not allowed to or they can't go anywhere else or whatever. It just means you know where people reside and stuff. Uh,
you know, everything is of God. He created everything is basically the gist of it. But anyway, going on, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but, winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness, but that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areopagate. I don't know. Pagite, and a woman named Demarius, and others with them. You know what? I really, I really like this a lot, and actually, you know, not like to pit different sermons against each other, but you know, there's there's different sermons in Acts at the beginning. I don't know what was it, Acts two or three? Uh, maybe it was chapter three. I don't know. With Peter, when you know, a lot of the a lot of the sermons. The major sermons, like with Peter and Stephen and, and even Paul before, I think, are mostly uh, geared towards the Jews. And so they talk about Abraham and Moses and David, and they go through, you know, the scriptures and the prophets prophesied of Jesus and all that. And, you know, that's obviously important, and, and I love that. But I love this, how it's geared more towards just unbelievers and he's just saying, you know, uh, that there is one God, and God created everything, and and um, you know how he doesn't need anything. And uh, let's see. Just that, you know, they're worshiping pagan gods and stuff, and, and he tells them, you know, Jesus is, you know, Jesus is God. There's only one true God. And he still talks about the resurrection. But you see, he didn't go into detail about Moses and, and all that. So it's different, and you see there's like different approaches to uh, to giving the gospel or um, to witnessing or, or preaching to different people. But yeah, I, I really like this one a lot. I would like to go into that a lot more. And we all not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven art in man's device or graven by art in man's device. He's not some idol. He's a living God. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say. I really like this one, so, but I gotta move on. And we're going to go on to Acts chapter 18 next. God bless, guys.